Because our congressional districts have new boundaries this year, the 52nd district is now more evenly divided between Democrat, Republican, and independent voters, making the outcome of this year's election unpredictable. Joining me to talk about his campaign is Republican candidate Congressman Brian Bilbray, who currently represents the 50th district. Congressman Bilbray, welcome. Great to be with you, Peggy. Um, a good portion of San Diego voters are military, and there's been some criticism uh, in articles about your voting record when it comes to veteran benefits, that you voted for uh, limiting veteran benefits or reducing them. Peggy, I'm, I come from a military family. I was born and raised, born on a military, uh, in a military hospital. My father died at Balboa. Um, I was the, the member who, with Bob Filner, got a two-year budget cycle for the veterans. And, you know, these kind of attacks are what happens come election time. I mean, I actually, with Bob, had the largest increase of benefits, um, I mean, funding for the Veterans Department while I was on that committee. Were those votes then something else? Did, those they... votes are the political action of saying, let's take the president's budget and let's add massive tax increases and double spending on something that the administration, that President Obama's people said, that we couldn't even, you know, we've got our budget, we've got plenty of money, and this is a political tactic. This is why people are so cynical about what goes on Washington, and that's why they believe so little of these things when they come out like this. Let's bring it back to San Diego. Many oh, of wait, your... Let me say one thing. Before we talk about veterans, I'm proud that I carry in my back pocket a lifetime honorary membership to the Fleet Reserve Association, a naval veterans organization. Not too many members of Congress can say that, so I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Um, let's bring it back to San Diego. I was saying you, many of your television ads talk about the economy and jobs in San Diego. Um, let's take a look at uh, one of those ads and, and what you're explaining there. Our first priority should be making sure that every San Diegan seeking employment can find a job. How? Well, we can start by getting rid of unfair regulations that make it not only hard, but practically impossible to start a business or hire employees. What unfair regulations are you specifically talking about in San Diego? Well, let me tell you, as a, as a former environmental regulator in one form or the other, I can tell you one would be the, the um, restrictions on uh, construction of the Jonas Salk School been held up for a year by federal regulators. It's a graded pad. It should have been able to go through. We have scientists working on green fuel technology that have state and federal programs blocking them from moving forward with a lot of production. Those are the kind of things that I think the American people and San Diegans especially who want jobs want us to change the regulations so it's legal for these small businesses doing great things to actually hire more people. You um, have worked a lot in this campaign to show voters that you are a moderate candidate, but according to Washington Post voting tracker, you voted with the Republican majority 90% of the time. Are there any issues that you wouldn't vote along party lines with? Oh, well, I think you just saw that I voted against their their bill on coal. I think that the concept of trying to subsidize what's called clean coal is logical as, as um, you know, uh, safe cigarettes. But no, my, my voting record has been rated from uh, one to, t um, to 100 as, as being liberal to conservative. I sit at 54. Bob Filner sits down, very liberal. People like um, the uh, Daryl Issa ends up at about a 74. But those are votes without procedural self. It's much like that, that vote that you were talking about where they said, oh, you voted against veterans. Those are political votes that are purposely set out there. It's the kind of waste of time that we need to get away from in Washington. But if you see the, the uh, journals and the way they've rated, I didn't decide to vote that way, but over my time in Congress, I've had a 54, not too much more moderate than right at that close to 50, which is the most moderate you can be. All right. Very quickly, we have less than a minute. You signed the Norquist pledge to never raise taxes while you're in Congress. How are you going to be able to keep that promise? Well, easy, because we have $4 trillion worth of taxes coming down the road now. We've just had a major tax increase done a few years ago on middle class people. And the fact is, this is one place where not even the president is talking about adding any more taxes on. We're talking just basically about who is going to get hit with, 
with the taxes that are on there and who are we going to keep off of it? And so the real issue here is not about talking about raising taxes. It's about how do we reduce the increase, massive increase, the largest increase that we have seen in this century will be will kick in in the next few months if we don't get together and work this out. And that's why it means somebody like myself that's worked with Democrats and Republicans found a common ground to work it out. We need to work together and that's the key in the next few years. All right. We are out of time. Congressman Brian Bilbray, thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you very much. Honor, Peggy.